Hey everyone, this is Matthew Kent. Welcome to Theology on the Ground, the daily thought from my quiet time. Today I wanted to tackle, uh, more than tackling a, a passage of scripture, uh, just a refresher on an approach uh, to tackling scripture. And so I, I've written an article about this before, and uh, today in my quiet time I came across, I think a, this might have even been a verse that I used as an example in that article, um, but it helps illustrate the point. And so the, the concept of reading the Bible and interpreting the Bible is that while we do want to pay attention to the historical context and um, and the grammar and, and the language and all that, and of course, much of that work of uh, deciphering the grammar was done by the people who did the translation, really we want to go in the order of, number one, letting the verse speak for itself. And so we're not going to try to, you know, introduce any interpretation that contradicts the verse uh, number two, letting the context clear up the meaning if the verse itself was unclear or had multiple possible interpretations. Number three, we want to use clear scripture to interpret unclear scripture. So if the context doesn't resolve the, the issue that we have, the immediate context, we can go to a, a different passage, preferably one by the same author addressing the same topic. Although because all scripture is inspired by God, we don't have to stick to that. Um, but certainly if, you, if you're reading something in Paul and uh, you're, you're unsure what it means, you know you can see if Paul talks about that same thing somewhere else and maybe that'll clear it up. And that's probably the easiest way to go about that. And then after all that fails, you know, you can consult commentaries and, you know, you let the historical evidence um, influence your uh, interpretation. So this passage, I thought, is a, a really good one uh, to help illustrate keeping those things in order. And so this comes from Matthew chapter 19, and I'm actually going to start in verse 23. And this is right after Jesus' encounter uh, which, with the rich young ruler. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of people look at that and they say, well, uh, of course a rich person can enter the kingdom of God, but a camel, a physical camel, cannot go through the eye of the needle, uh, you know, an actual needle, that's impossible. So this must be talking about something else. And so there's these historical, well, maybe that, you know, there's a gate in Jerusalem called the eye of the needle and the camel had the, the money bags and you know the, the bags for your possessions like the saddle bags on the side and and this gate was so narrow that you know unless you took off those possessions and you know removed those side saddle bags from the the camel the camel couldn't make it through now that's a nice thought but it's not what he's saying here and if we just read a little bit further uh it would become clear so let's read a little bit further Verse 25, when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? So before we go on, because it's going to get cleared up even further, notice their response. Their response is not, oh, okay, yeah, I understand. It's like going through the eye of the needle, the gate on a camel. Their response is, wait a minute, you just said it's impossible. You just said it's impossible for a rich person under the kingdom of heaven. You said it was like going through the eye of a needle, camel going through the eye of the needle, which is impossible. Is their, is their reading of Jesus' words correct there? Well, let's let Jesus speak for himself. Verse 26, But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. In other words, Jesus says, You were right to interpret my phrase of, you know, the rich going to, to heaven is kind of like a camel going through the eye of the needle as meaning it's impossible for somebody who's rich to go to the kingdom of heaven. And the point that he's getting at uh, is not that no rich person would be saved. And they ask him, well, if a rich person can't be saved, who can be saved? And his point is nobody, if you're talking about your own efforts and your own ability to save yourself. He said, with man, this is possible, but with it, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. So in other words, in saying it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to go to the kingdom of God, he is saying it's impossible for a rich man to get to the kingdom of God. Impossible through 
non-miraculous, non-divine uh, intervention. Because when you think about it, God could put a camel through the eye of the needle, I guess. I don't know how he'd do that. He'd either shrink the camel or make the eye of the needle bigger, or maybe he would just circumvent the, the normal laws of physics which he created. I don't know. Uh, but the implication is yeah, God can save a person who can't be saved. God can get a camel through the eye of a needle. An actual, literal animal, camel, through the eye of a literal needle. Not something called the eye of the needle, but the, the actual eye on a little sewing needle. Uh, God can do that. And that's how we interpret the Bible. We see something that looks like might be a little bit odd. We say, do we, do we have the right interpretation? And then you look for clues in the context um, to see if your interpretation is correct. Now, it's a good thing that we had that in here because obviously uh, for this particular story, there wouldn't really be anywhere else that we could go directly where, you know, this particular uh, teaching of Jesus is, is elaborated on. Um, so it'd sort of be like, you know, if, if, if it weren't explained well here, uh, it would sort of always be a point of disagreement and we would just have to say, well, we don't really know what he was saying there. So fortunately it's like that there, but that's the general order. Number one, let the verse speak for itself, right? You're not going to contradict the verse. Number two, let the context interpret the verse. Number three, let clear scripture interpret unclear scripture. And of course, it's really important to get both parts of that right. You need to make sure that you find... Uh, clear scripture that's applicable, and you need to make sure that you are using it to interpret a passage that is legitimately unclear. Um, and then if all else fails, you know, we can look to commentaries, we can look to uh, various historical pieces of evidence for, for clues as to how it should have been read. There's the simple way to, to read the Bible, to interpret the Bible, and uh, to be faithful in uh, getting all that the Bible's worth out of it. Those are my thoughts for today. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you have a great day, and Lord willing, I will be talking to you guys again tomorrow.